videos this week talking about marketing in survival mode. So on Monday, I talked about um, how it's okay if you're not super productive at the moment. You're not, you know, you don't need to do comparisonitis with everybody into action if you need some time to breathe and to think that's fine this is, crisis is going to be a, a long-term crisis and so if you don't immediately have the answers that's fine because we're in it for a little while yesterday I talked about turning your marketing upside down focusing on your customers first then on your prospects and then on people who've never heard of you now today I'm going to zoom on in on those existing customers now, what I'm taking you through today are concepts from, um, from my book, Watertight Marketing. So if you want to go into more detail, um, that book is, uh, the second edition comes out next week, funnily enough, on my birthday, which is Tuesday. So what do I want to talk to you about today? I want to talk to you about keeping your existing customers. Now, I've printed out the graphics from the book just to help illustrate this. So um, what we do in Watertight Marketing, this is a dissection of a marketing funnel. And what we do is, to go through the marketing funnel, and this is called the 13 touch point leads. And each of these is somewhere um, where you lose people on their journey to becoming a customer with you. Now down at the bottom, adoption and loyalty, this is where your existing customers live. So they are people who've adopted your services and you want them to be loyal. Now, as I said yesterday, we redraw the funnel as buckets, funnels, and taps. So hopefully you can see that. We do the adoption loyalty in your bucket, then your funnels and filters is that um, conversion area, evaluation and trial, and then awareness and interest is taps where you generate your new business. Now, what I said yesterday is turn it upside down to what might seem natural, which is shouting and gaining leads and generating awareness, and focus in on your existing customers first, then on your prospects, and then on those new ones. Now, let's zoom in on that bucket area and go through the three touch point leaks here what should you be doing with your existing customers right now in this time of crisis so leak number one is forgotten customers leak number two is about onboarding so welcoming your existing customers and leak number three is about emotional connection and so in terms of what that means for your existing customers now in this a really difficult time. So leak number three, emotional connection. What I would advise you to do there is to be thinking about your tone of voice, um, making sure that you know your humanity and warmth and caring is coming across. So take some time to look at all your communications. I was saying yesterday about automated email sequences, all of those sorts of things, and have a look at the tone, have a look at the copy to make sure that it's appropriate for the time that we're in. Onboarding, leak number two, this is about the way that you bring customers on board in your, um, in your organisation. Now what I would say there is that it may be pertinent at the moment to have a look at extending uh, payment plan options and that sort of thing to your existing customers. Now obviously I don't know the nature of your business so I can't advise on the detail of that, but do have a think about whether there are ways in which you could extend the terms um, that might make it easier if the majority of your clients are those who are going to be significantly affected. Now obviously um, what this does mean is some of the clients that you already have may go out of business, may not be able, you know, may simply not have the money to pay you. Now what I would say about that is they may go out of business in their current form but they, the people who are in those businesses will get other jobs. And the way that you interact now will affect whether they come back to you in the future. So the fact that the existing entities that, that are out there at the moment may change, may reinvent, or so the people within them may land in different roles, doesn't mean that you shouldn't be thinking about really um, working with those existing customers in a really warm and productive way. So let's zoom in, if you'll um, forgive my uh, high-tech graphics here, let's zoom in on forgotten customers. So for each of the touch point leaks, we have three themes, and those themes are there to help you to really navigate what you should be doing around this area. So number one, forgotten customers. The question to ask yourself is, do your existing customers remember you? Now in this time of crisis, what do you want them to remember you for? You want them to remember you for being empathetic, for being warm, for being human and authentic, 
you want them to remember you for the right things. So let's go into service, social and special. So first of all, what I would say is segment your customer database into active customers, recent customers and dormant customers. The most important to communicate with being your active, then your more recent, then your dormant. I wouldn't go doing a mass mailing to all of them saying the same thing to everybody. I would segment it and make it really relevant. Now, you might be thinking people are jumping into action with new products and services. And if you've got a brilliant idea for a new product and service that's relevant at the moment, that might be the right thing to do. For others, you might need to take a little bit of time for the dust to settle. So what I would suggest you do with your active customers is, of course, communicate with them what's going on now. So anything they need to know about your existing services. But maybe book in a call with them for a couple of weeks time to talk to them about what they need, what they want, what they're going to, what um, they're doing about the sorts of things that you provide. So think about it as, as active listening that you need to be doing. And you don't need to be doing it immediately because they might not even know the answers, but maybe for those active customers, communicate the existing things and then um, make sure that you've got some calls booked in with them to be helpful and to listen and to be of service. Then have a think about all the things you could do that are absolutely relevant, a checklist, a template, a guide of some kind. There are some businesses who are providing really good service at the moment. My HR person has been providing me with the letters that you need to put somebody on furlough, for example. These sorts of things are, are pertinent. So have a look at what you do and think, what do my existing customers, what could I do that would be of service to them now? When you've got something that is genuinely of service to them, I would get in touch with them personally. And this is about the um, making people feel special. So it, it may be time to go outside of your CRM, outside of those mass mailings, and drop them all a personal line with that useful information. I would also take time to connect with all of your existing customers on LinkedIn, because it may be that after this process, they land in different jobs, and the contact details you have for them now may not be relevant after this, but they will, as I say, land in other roles. So book those calls in for a few weeks time when the dust has settled to ask and listen and then take some time to review your products and services in terms of what you can provide now but also what you really want to be doing on the other side of this. This is an opportunity to reflect on your values as I was saying and think about the vision for the business that you want on the other side of this. So then there's the other service. The other one is social. For some of you, it might be pertinent to do some social things with your um, clients at the moment. I've seen people setting up um, quizzes on Zoom, virtual coffee mornings, networking. All of this stuff can be done virtually. and It might uh, be absolutely pertinent for you to be doing that sort of thing with your existing customers. As much as anything, you need to make sure that the tone of your um, contact with them is sociable and you know keeping, keeping spirits up. You might want to put together a playlist or something fun like that um, that's relevant to Um, this might be the time to, to get out those greetings cards. Perhaps you've got a pair of gloves when you're signing them and posting them um, to be uh, you know, mindful of not passing on um, any bugs. Um, but now might be the time just to write a personal letter um, to the clients that you know and love, um, dropping them a line, just say you're thinking of them and uh, uh, you know, sending them a note of uh, support. So what else could you do to make them feel special? Have a think about what, um, you know, you, maybe that you have some, some collateral, some bits and pieces in your back catalogue that you could send to each of your clients at the moment. The post offices are still running and your one walk a day could be to put some things um, in the post. So in terms of your existing customers, what I would say is the people that are within those client organizations are going to land somewhere and there's a key concept in waterline marketing called commercial karma and that is that treating people decently is a business strategy and so what you do now with your existing business will come back to you um, in goodwill when the economy picks up on the other side of this so those are my ideas about what you should be doing with your existing customers lots of love for me I'll be back tomorrow to talk about what you can do with those prospects Lots of love. Bye.